In this module, we'll discover lumbar spine x-rays. We'll review AP and lateral views. Now, before you bring your patient in the room, you want to make sure that you do as much preparation work as possible. You want to input your patient demographics into your digital system, if that's what you're utilizing. You also want to set your techniques at your generator, whether that's manual techniques or anatomical regions that you indicate. In this case, you also want to make sure that you are aligning your tube with your table. All these exams are done in this section on the uh, patient examination table, not at the upright bucky, but in which case you do want to make sure that you are aligning your overhead tube to the table. What that looks like is this right here. You see this collimator field. This is not the x-ray table specifically. This should indicate the film area where the uh, that is located underneath the table now you'll have if you don't have a dr system that is automated you'll want to insert your cassette into the system and have it ready before the patient comes in but there are locks that are in place and there are horizontal locks there are vertical locks top to bottom and there are longitudinal locks so as you'll uh, depress your controls on your tube it will lock you in place longitudinally and widthwise and heightwise, so you'll know that you're locked in place to your cassette. The AP lumbar spine is located in the lower uh, thorax or the the upper uh, abdomen, lower thorax of the body. It's often more high or higher than some people expect. Uh, simply because you, when we talk about the lumbar spine, we're talking about the lower back, but you must have to have perspective and understand that it includes an area that encompasses the yellow highlights. We will utilize the uh, uh, iliac crest as a benchmark. The iliac crest will help us to determine exactly where we want to be in order to center our crosshairs. We want to be three fingers above the iliac crest when we're measuring on a uh, top to bottom plane on the patient. So you'll have to feel the iliac crest and it's going to help if I tell you that when you put your hands on your hips, your, the top of your hands is where you're feeling where the iliac crest is. It's that bony protuberance off to the side, close to the middle of your abdomen. So you palpate that on the patient and then you measure three fingers above that. Or look at this, three fingers above the umbilicus does the same thing, but oftentimes when patients are wearing gowns and shirts, it's a little bit more challenging to find this area. Now also clearly you are centering midline as the spine uh, dissects the body perfectly. It's found midline. Some people have scoliosis. Keep that in mind. In fact, if a patient tells you they have scoliosis, it will benefit you to open your collimators up a little bit more. But for the most part, these benchmarks uh, are effective on virtually any patient. Now looking at the exam a little bit closer, you'll have the patient laying supine uh, on their back. They can bend their knees if they want to. You just want to make sure that the, beat, the knees aren't too high because sometimes uh, the, their, their legs will impinge on the image itself, not interfering with the spine per se, but will overlap the, the pelvis, which some physicians like to see the pelvis. That being said, remember, we're three fingers above the crest and we're centering midline with our crosshairs. You are 40 inches on the table. You want to make sure that you're, column, you're closing your collimator width to width. Now, your top to bottom collimator uh, will extend as high up and, and low as you need it to. But you want to also make sure you close the collimator to about hip width apart. See how that is closed in? You're not opening it up as if you're x-raying the abdomen, but you're closing it in to limit it to uh, the anatomy as much as possible. As a note, these are lead... Uh, uh, protective uh, covers 
So they've got this woman's gonads covered uh, appropriately. So if you have those, it's a good thing. Sometimes you want to avoid putting an apron over them because the less experienced operators will sometimes cover up the anatomy accidentally and you'll have to repeat the film. A good baseline uh, uh, technique for this examination is 35 mass at 75 kvp. Remember, that is not a slam dunk on a perfect image. That's just a good baseline technique that you can work around and learn to grow your techniques from. The anatomical evaluation for the lumbar spine. You'll know the L5 when you come down. You can see this little butterfly-looking bone. Uh, this is actually the sacrum, but it intersects and, and it's uh, uh, connected to the pelvis with this ilium-looking environment. So when you see that little joint there, there, the ASIS, you'll know that you look just above that to find the lumbar spine. So we can count backwards. Most of the time we do count backwards five, four, three, two, one, and now the next one up is T12. And can you tell the difference between T, uh, L1 and T12? You've got a rib going off to the side. See that? That little white area going off to the side? Now you know you've got one, two, three, four, five vertebra. You've got a good AP spine. You're opened to hit with the part. You see the sacroiliac joint, uh, the SI joints in there. And so this is a good x ray examination. And we also have a left marker indicating the patient's left side. We also see the intervertebral spaces between the vertebra, which help us to know that we have a good camera angle on the film. For the lateral lumbar spine, again, we're at the 40-inch table bucky uh, location. Now, don't let all these markings intimidate you. Basically, you see the white lines here. I'm trying to help you understand that you want to get your patient, oh goodness, you want to get your patient as perpendicular to the table as possible. So in order to do that, you want to make sure that the scapulas, the field of the scapulas, if you feel the top scapula and the bottom scapula, and it feels like that is perpendicular to the table, you're doing a good job. Also, you want to... Um, align their, their hips perpendicular to the table. Now, uh, you may use their, um, just eyeball their rear end, so to speak, <laughs> and see if that looks relatively flush in a perpendicular format as well. I will often touch the patient right here to feel if you know how some people are a little bit heavier than others you can feel these flaps one here you have the spine here and then here if it feels like those flaps are kind of lined up to the table i'll use that as a measuring uh, tool as well but of course you you cannot uh, palpate the patient anywhere back here but you can you can touch their hip here and to, uh, their hip up here and then their waistline here to determine as much as you can uh, eyeballing it and feeling it to make sure that she's as lateral as possible. Then also, just like we did on the front shot, we want to center three fingers above the crest. Now I call this, remember, the tickle line. The tickle line is uh, a non-medical term which is simply sometimes when people are doing these lateral exams, they're not sure where exactly they need to be to get a good image. But you know what? If you walk up to somebody and you want to tickle them in the ribs, you know almost exactly where to poke them on the ribs. And that's the line that I'm talking about. If you, if you tickle somebody, if you pick that spot, and then you draw a line straight down their body, that's the line we're talking about that you want to center to. You want to close your collimator light just a little bit. Um, not too much, and uh, you'll want to include uh, as much of the lumbar spine as you can. In order to help them to encourage them to be completely lateral, the way we're discussing and perpendicular to the table, make sure that their hands are together and they're tucked under their head like they're going to sleep. You also want their knees together and their ankles together, and that will pretty much get you what you want. But I want to forewarn you, don't trust the patient that if they do those three things, that they are going to be perfectly lined up. That's just a starting point. It's up to you to look down and examine the body and make sure they're as perfect as they can be in a lateral position. 
a good baseline technique for a lateral lumbar spine is 40 mass at 80 kvp now there can be many ranges on this level um this is just a starting point, but there are some people that can go up uh, into the 90s and 150 mass, that kind of thing. I'm not going to scare you, you with that at this point. Set this up as your baseline technique, and then you can build your blocks from there. Now, here's an evaluation of the lateral lumbar spine. Notice how we enumerated the lateral lumbar as well. We've got uh, this first vertebra here. I'm, actually, let's make it easier. We're counting back from the sacrum. Remember that triangular-looking bone at the bottom. We see the sacrum. We count back five, four, three, two, one, and then you've got your intervertebral spaces. Uh, and then another uh, item to help you to identify is you've got these spinous processes in the back that will help you if you're having a tough time determining which spine. If they have a crushed spine, sometimes it's a tough time to count it. So you can use your spinous processes to count as well. Uh, this is marked right, which indicates that the patient's right side was down on the table. So uh, whichever side is down against the film is the side you're going to mark on this film. Another thing I want to indicate to you we, uh, we want to kind of uh, see what an overexposure looks like. See how dark we can't see the spinous processes back here. This impedes our ability to count the vertebra, although you can, in this case, you can barely see them a little bit. Um, you want to make sure that you have uh, a lot of black and white tones, but enough to where you can see the vertebra clearly here. Uh, this is a good film to, uh, to base a good technique off of. Here is a whited out film. Many times you'll have underexposed films. You need to turn up your technique to uh, vision them better. In some of these heavier patients, your film will be very grayed out. So you have to make sure that you penetrate through the body adequately.